Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples, and I'm here on another muggy, misty Florida morning. But September is closing away, and October's coming in, and with it, the hope of good weather. So all is not lost. But um, anyway, today I've got today I've got this. Oh, excuse me. Today I've got this 2011 Honda Accord EXL sedan. Uh, you know, this is a car we took in on trade. It's got high miles. It's, you know, seven years old. It's the kind of thing I would instantly wholesale and just, I don't even want to see it. I, I don't even want to know it's there. But, uh, you know, the sales guys, they said, look, this is something we should sell. This is, you know, people buy these things. And I did do some research and it turns out they are right. People, people do buy Honda Accords. Uh, frankly, I find them to be a little bit dangerous, uh, you know, because so many highway Injuries and fatalities are caused each year by people falling asleep at the wheel and it's just not something that I want to contribute to but They won the fight and and here's the car and oh, Excuse me, and we're moving forward uh, You know Honda was founded in the 30s not the modern Honda Motor Company But you know the guy who started Honda Motor Company founded a company in the 30s uh, building and tuning race cars. Now, I mean, if that's not irony, I just simply don't know what is. But uh, anyway, so he started building and tuning race cars. Then he went on to build piston rings that, uh, you know, Toyota was buying off him. But apparently he really sucked at building piston rings because that only lasted for a year or two. And Toyota said the quality was crap, so they stopped buying them. Then he came up with some new kind of process and made some new piston rings. And then Toyota did start buying those. And, uh, you know, and then they went on to do a lot of other little stuff. The war came along. They started working, making propellers and parts for aircraft. And, uh, you know, then their factory got bombed by B-29s, as one would expect. And, you know, to add insult to injury, in 45, some big earthquake uh, took out the rebuilt factory. I mean, you've got B-29s on one hand, and then you've got an earthquake, you know, immediately thereafter. It's almost like the poor bastard was cursed. But uh, anyway, after the war, they started sort of in on the uh, motorcycle idea, started building some pretty damn good motorcycles. And by 65, I want to say they were the largest manufacturer of motorcycles in the world. Uh, in 65, they did build their first car somewhere around there. And uh, the first car was chain driven. Uh, you like the motorcycle. So, uh, you know, one always sort of harkens back to their roots. Anyway, uh, what can one say about a Honda Accord? I mean, it's basically what you get when you've completely given up on life. Okay, now that's not entirely fair. It's what you get when, you know, when what you need is transportation, when what you need is a car. Uh, you know, it's not something you buy because you wanna, you know, live on the edge. You're, you're buying it because it's gonna start every morning. It's, you know, very well engineered and reasonably appointed. It's got plenty of room to put stuff and, you know, drives down the road nice and, you know, does everything a car should do, uh, even if it's completely devoid of any kind of excitement whatsoever. Uh, you can see this one in good shape, again with the mist. Oh God, the mist is gonna make me nuts. Look at the roof of this thing. I mean, you could cut this humidity with a knife. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, let's start inside the trunk. Let's just get this over with. I'm worried. You know, I, I can't, I don't hate Accords. My dad bought an Accord for my mom in the 80s. It was, I wanna say 89. And uh, you know, as a kid, I thought it was really a great car, but Oh, God, that had flip-up headlights, at least. It reminded me of a Miata. Uh, anyway, here in the trunk, you've got, uh, well, a nice, big, enormous trunk, what you'd expect from a car in this class. I'm sorry I've got all my crap in there, taking a little trip today. Uh, you can see somebody's put down one of these accessory rubber mats, so if you want your cargo good to go sliding all over the place, that's a good place to put it. Uh, there's also a uh, pull handle here to lower the rear seats. Uh, although you have a little tight, narrow area there for the rear seats. You're not getting a sheet of plywood in there. Uh, it does have a pass-through for your sniper rifle, so that's not a problem. That can go up the middle. Uh, but uh, otherwise, a cavernous trunk, uh, reasonably well-appointed, and just, you know, 
pretty much Honda. I have to say there is something to buying a car from a company uh, based on a culture where people who don't perform uh, may end up jumping out a window. Uh, and in fact, that has become one of my favorite interview questions is, uh, you know, the, the whole seppuku Harry Carey thing. Uh, you know, if you've been found to bring disgrace and shame to Auto Europa, uh, would you perform ritualistic suicide to regain honor and, uh, you know, help your company out? And most of them don't even answer. They just look at me like I'm some kind of asshole. Anyway, uh, here's an inline four cylinder. Because this is the EXL, it's the 190 horsepower version of that. Uh, it's, of course, a fantastic engine. It never stops. It always runs. It puts out adequate power. It's smooth. It's lovely. It's made into a five-speed automatic. <sighs> Excuse me. And uh, just does everything that it's supposed to do flawlessly, as it's done in this car with 142,000 miles. It just has run and run and run and run. Never asked for anything and just kept going. So, you know, that is very much unlike a BMW and Mercedes. You've got to hand it to them for that. And, uh, and so we will. So anyway, uh, 2011 saw a refresh in the Accord. It got a different grill. It got some sharper lines, some better looking lights, uh, different wheels, you know, little tasteful add-ons that just sort of refreshed the image. Uh, I'd say it worked okay. The styling's fine. Uh, one nice thing about the XL is you end up with leather. So you've got uh, this lovely soft leather, nicely bunched in the middle, nice to sit in. Uh, you've got very adequate rear leg room, as you better, again, in this class. You've got all sorts of uh, upstarts and old timers competing with you. Uh, very, very nice, very attractive uh, trim. Uh, you know, everything just so damn well put together. Uh, you know, this is a beautiful plastic imitation of wood you might find in a Bentley. I like the two tone blackish grayish stuff it's got black carpets with the light gray leather which looks nice you've got three rear headrests you've got a little fold down center console that my detailer probably didn't clean and uh, anyway it just all looks really nice and proper back there a comfy place to sit stuff your Canadians in there they're gonna be fine have a look inside here so, you know, I don't know if this was the redesign or if they were like this before, but you've got kind of this dual curved Batman look at dashboard. I'm reaching in my pocket here trying to find the keys and I can't, which is just annoying beyond description. Too much crap in my pockets. But uh, anyway, a very lovely, very well designed uh, cabin. You know, it just looks nice. We've got uh, two keys with this thing. Uh, it's just a shame that no excitement is conceivable when you're sitting in this. But anyway, everything laid out proper. You've got your power windows, your power mirrors, your power locks. You've got a little map pocket thingy over here. Uh, you've got more of that uh, faux Bentley wood in the dash and the door panels. Very nice, lovely leather seats, nice and supportive with lumbar and power controls. Again, being the the thing ain't cheap. It was like thirty something thousand bucks. So it's uh, yeah, fairly expensive for a court. I think my dad paid twelve and eighty nine for a very similar model. Anyway, let's fire it up. And you hear that four fires right to life. Now, it would have been nice if this thing had a manual gearbox. I, I hear the oh jeez, fix that. I hear the hundred ninety horsepower four with the manual gearbox is a pretty nice combination. But I'm going to remain neutral on that until I try it for myself. Get a little bit see going here. Okay, so what we have is a very simple instrument cluster, backlit, nice, you know, it's black behind, some sort of silvery glowing things. Uh, you've got your tack, your water temp, your fuel. Uh, you've got your uh, speedo, of course, your uh, trip odometer and uh, regular odometer down there in the bottom. You've got your uh, PRNDL kind of thing there uh, for the five-speed automatic, uh, you know, in the middle. Honda's had that for a long time. You've got a very nice multifunction steering wheel here with leather grippities. Uh, I don't know if the steering wheel is heated. I think so. I think it is. The seats are heated, but I can't promise you anything. Uh, it does have Bluetooth being the XL, so that I have no idea how to set it up. There's absolutely no phone button on here anywhere. I go to menu and it just comes up with stuff for the radio. So I know it's got Bluetooth. I just don't know how the hell it works. So you're going to have to figure that out yourself. Uh, of course, cruise control, these little nickel accents. You know, it's all very pretty. Uh, you got your turn signals as you need in a car. You got your wipers over there, nice and intermittent. You've got a self-dimming mirror sunroof I haven't tested, but of course it works. 
doesn't even chug. It probably hasn't been opened in five years and it still works perfectly. Uh, you got this little screen up here for your, uh, this one doesn't have the nav, it's uh, just the uh, the EXL without that, so uh, basically covers your radio. If you go into menu, you see what I'm talking about, bass, treble, balance, subwoofer, I think 270 watts uh, with the sub, six speakers, it sounds pretty good. In fact, let's uh, see what we got. Never do we ever get music on this thing anymore. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna to go to a different station. Let's go to the 90s. See what they're doing there. Crap. I don't know. I think music went to crap in the 90s. Anyway, doesn't matter. You've got all these HVAC controls here and a big long line. This big fat center console thing. Uh, they're fine. You know, you can figure them out. Although if you need glasses, you better be wearing them because it's hard to sort of figure out the hieroglyphics from a distance. Uh, dual side climate control. Uh, in dash uh, CD changer if you're still using those uh, you know all your different clocks and Sirius XM's and can't wait the 80s let me down oh, here we go the clash you see that's a fine song it's just you know it would it would be completely out of place in the 90s anyway you've got uh, a little place here to put a compact nine millimeter you can have extra clips for it beneath it uh, you got uh, not an ashtray uh, over there with a 12 volt out and let you got your heated seats you've got a very ample normal shifter here in the middle uh, you've got some cup holders here if you want to put some cups in there here we've got an auxiliary input USB power outlet all very nice stuff you've got a glove box over here with some spare bulbs and books in it uh, we got airbags everywhere you got a airbags here airbags here so of course it's all very safe let's go for a drive and again, I mean, this car is not built to, you know, excite a car guy. It's built to, you know, appeal to the most number of people and sell the most copies. So, uh, you know, that's not an easy task. It really isn't. I mean, to, to appeal to a huge segment of the population, you can't be too much this or too much that or too little this or too little that. You've got to be very wary of your price points and your, uh, your MSRPs. You've got to, you know, make sure your trim levels are accessible. So just not an easy job to uh, to mass market a car like this and frankly nobody does it better than Honda uh, you know they've been on car and drivers 10 best list like 24 times uh, you know their build quality their customer satisfaction their materials everybody loves them uh, you've got these dedicated Honda files who are frankly almost as irritating as the people in the BMW club and um, it's sad seeing run over animals on their own very uh, devastating anyway um, unless it was birds anyway so that you know Honda has excelled at that I mean it's absolutely excelled at building the most bulletproof comfortable lovely easy to live with boring cars on the planet you know Honda is an upstart they, they've been around forever of course but as a competitor to Honda they're relatively new and uh, they've done a fantastic job with uh, you know the Sonata it really had to bump up Honda's game to compete and uh, I suspect Honda's building nicer cars cars today than even uh, when this thing was made but uh, anyway it's a fine car so you know 140,000 miles is just starting life you probably put 400 on it uh, it's gonna be safe it's gonna be reliable it's gonna be comfy you can drive it around the air conditioning's freezing the heat's good everything still works when you press the button so you know there it is it is what it is it's a fine piece uh, if you have an interest in this thing give us a call make our sales guys happy and like getting on this is great I'll be here for a while. Anyway, uh, make our sales guys. And by the way, no, I didn't hammer it. I didn't. I mean, honestly, why? Why? It's just not what it's meant to be. So, okay. Well, here. There you go. I mean, you have to admit a 7,000, uh, you know, limit red line, nice. Uh, but uh, still, come on. Don't bother. Give our sales guys a thrill, 239-298-8000, on the web at aenaples.com. Thank you so much for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.